Hey everybody! Welcome to a Wedding Wednesday Cricut tutorial. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. And hit the bell icon because that will alert you too when I post a new video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make really beautiful paper lanterns. These are so much fun and they make such a beautiful piece for your wedding. These are great for your centerpieces, to line your aisle, and they're super safe because you use a battery powered tea light. That way you have no open flames and a lot of venues don't allow an open flame. So these are great alternatives. And these you can personalize them any way you like. This one has some kind of floral to it. So all you'll need for this project are some battery operated tea lights and cardstock in the color of your choosing. And we'll just get over to Design Space so I can show you guys how we'll design these. Over in Design Space, we're just going to start with a shape. So we're just going to get a square and I'm going to unlock it because I want these to be a little bit taller. They're going to be more rectangular. So I'm just going to do it three inches wide and five inches tall. We will resize them once we have everything put together so that we can make sure that it fits on our sheet of paper. But for now, this just gives us a good size to start with. So the next thing that we need to do is you're going to go into images and I've already pulled mine up, but I searched in categories and I searched the word lace and that brings up all these neat little patterns. And I found one down here that I liked, but you guys can use whichever one you prefer. But I really thought this one was really pretty. So I'm going to insert the image. Now, Design Space is kind of silly where they actually give you, if you look over here in your layers, there's a black piece that's behind this. Um, it's weird. You don't need it. I don't I imagine that if you were making a card, that might be why you'd want it. But I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup this really quick. And then I'm just going to cut, get rid of it. I don't need it. There's no need for it. So the next thing that we need to do is we're going to unlock this guy. And we're going to put it in our rectangle over here. And you're just going to stretch it out to where you want it. Now keep in mind, you are going to have a tab at the bottom and one tab on the side of one of these that's going to need to be used to um, like attach them, I guess is the word I'm looking for, to hold it all together. So don't make your little, you know, don't go right to the edge with this. You need to leave a little bit of a border. So now that we know how big this is, I'm going to move this over to the side. And I found this just to be the easiest way to slice this because we do need to slice this. But we actually need to just slice out a rectangle because if you slice this out, you're going to end up with something that's completely useless because all the center pieces are going to be in the way. So I'm going to get another shape and I'm going to do a square and we're going to unlock it. Now here is where you're going to make note of the size over here. So I have 4.343 tall and 2.512 wide. So I want to make them just this square, this gray square, just a little bit smaller than this. So I'm going to make this, I'm going to make it 4.3 high. So you can just go up to the top and type in 4.3 and then check your width. So it's 2.512. So I'm going to go with um, 2. Point, let's go with 2.49. We're doing this so that we end up with a little bit of a border so that this can still attach to it. Now, it's clearly not centered. There's a trick to getting this perfectly centered. Select these two pieces, so select both of your squares, and what you're gonna do is click a line and you're just gonna click center. And what that does is it puts that square perfectly in the center for you. Now, I just like to double check that it looks like it's going to leave enough of a border that it's going to attach and it doesn't really look like it's going to. And that's why I always check because you can always resize this down just a little bit if you need to. So I'm going to go with like 2.5 wide and I'm going to bring this down to um, 4.25. You may need to recenter again. So just double check it. Go ahead, align it and center it. And then I'm just going to, again, double check. That way you know that you've got just enough edge that it's going to hold on to your design. And I think we're good. But what you can do is you can actually select all three and just align and center again. And that's going to show you where you just have a little bit of an edge. And I think we might be okay on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this little guy out of the way. We don't need that. And like I said, it's all a matter of if how you want it to go. So I may resize this down just a little bit more. Um, I'm just a little more comfortable with a little more edge on this one. So now what you do is you take both the littler square rectangle and the bigger rectangle and just slice it out. 
because we don't need these two rectangles anymore. So you can just get rid of that. And then you're going to take this guy. And again, you can just select both pieces. We're going to align and center. And then I'm going to weld them. What that does is it creates it all into one piece. I hate looking at it in this bright color. It makes me nuts. So I'm just going to change it back. Um, we're just going to change it to something a little darker. So there is your one panel for your... Um, if my brain would work, we'd be doing great for our lantern. Now we need three more of these panels. So all we need to do is just click duplicate a couple of times. So now that we have four of them, what I like to do is I'm going to get them all touching. Maybe. And you just want to make sure that they're touching enough that they overlap just a hair, not, not too much. Just a teeny tiny bit because we are going to weld these all together. But you're also going to take all of them, select them, and we are going to align these ones as well before we do anything else. Now this one we're going to align um, bottom. And what that does is just puts them all nice and even and it's perfectly nice and even. Now before we weld them, I'm going to just use these lines that are already in here to put in our score line. For a score line, you go into shape, select score line, and all we do is we line it up with the line that's already there. And that's why I do it this way, because I want to be sure that it's already nice and lined up. And you want to make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom. And then you duplicate it because you're going to need it a couple of times. And we're actually going to need this more than we th than you think because we need to score not only between each panel, which is this score line. And let me find another one of them. They're hard to see, just a warning. But we also are going to need a score line at the very end. And I'm going to put that next little piece in so you guys can see it. We're going to open our shapes again and we're going to open a square. And this one you're going to make really kind of thin and almost as long as the piece that you have. So you want to make sure that it'll fit kind of behind those little cutouts. So you want to make it relatively thin. And you, like I said, it doesn't have to be as long as the piece because you're going to have some tabs at the bottom too. And all we're going to do is put that right there. And we're going to use one of the other score lines. And we got to make sure we find, okay, we got to make sure we got score lines in every place. There's our extra one. I say, I know we had one more extra one. So let's get rid of him for now. So we don't need it. So this is so far what you have for your lantern. So what we're going to do is select all of the pieces of our lantern, including that little gray tab there, and click on weld. And that's just going to make it all one whole piece. So it's going to take it a second. And you'll notice I didn't have them quite close enough. So see where we have right here a gap? And then here is a gap. You may have that. So go ahead, click undo. And you're just going to take your piece and move it just a hair over. And you're going to do the same thing with this one, although you're going to need to move that about two hairs over. And then you're going to do that. And you're going to move this one over just a little bit. And again, select them all. And then you're going to align bottom. I do this just in case anything shifted. And we're going to select everything again. We're only going to select the... Um, panels not the uh, score lines so you're going to go ahead and select all your panels and you're going to weld and this time hopefully we won't have any gaps we still have a gap <laughs> so go ahead and you're just sometimes with this you just have to kind of play with it so you can just select all three pieces and just scoot it over just a wee bit more honest to god these are just kind of more or less you just have to mess with them and see what you get so we'll go ahead and weld again and I totally messed up because I accidentally selected my score lines so I, it's actually a good thing I did that so that's why I kept telling you guys not to weld everything we just need to um, weld the pieces so I'm gonna undo this I know this is kind of crazy guys but this is honestly these are great and I love them once they're done but they are kind of a bit labor intensive so make sure you don't select your score lines you should have your three score lines one two and three so one, two, three, and then we're going to have one score line right over here. So let's go ahead and just duplicate this score line. It's fine. Move him over here. And you're going to want to line him up with just the edge of that piece of paper. Perfect. 
but we still need a bottom. You don't always have to have a bottom on these. Um, it's a matter of personal preference. I will show you guys how to put the bottom on it. It's pretty easy. So what we're going to do is you're going to open a square here. And you'll need to make sure that your square is slightly smaller than your panel. So what I'll do is I will slice it down a little bit. And you need to make sure that it's not going to be as wide. So we know that our panels are three by five, which means once you go to fold it, it's going to be a five by five square, or I'm sorry, a three by three square on the bottom. So that's something you need to keep in mind is that you need a little bit of space to um, align this. Now for me, um, personally, I will just kind of eyeball it as to where the center is and I'll make sure it overlaps just a hair. And you're going to need tabs on this one as well. Just like you put that tab on the side and I totally clicked the wrong thing. So let me go back. Um, so you're going to want to make a square and this one needs the tabs. So go ahead and unlock your square, make it skinny and give it a little tiny tab and don't do that. Don't grab the wrong thing. Um, so you're going to want a tab on each side of your square so that you can glue that to the lantern base. Um, you just need to make sure that your tabs and your square bottom are all going to line up. Now, again, I, I made this one a little bit small, so we're going to make it just a little bit bigger. But we can't go too big because we need to make sure that it... All right, perfect. I think that will work. So then we're just going to use small tabs. We don't need anything big. So all I do is I just duplicate that three times. I will go ahead and oops, undo that because I grabbed the wrong thing. If you grab the wrong thing, just hit undo. And all you're going to do is just put these so that they are all on the square. I just turned this one so that it fit. And all we're going to do is just make sure everything's touching. Select. Um, you need to select the lantern all the little tabs and the square and then you're going to click weld and what that'll do is it's going to make it all one piece as long as everything overlapped which hopefully it did again we have another little gap so just hit undo and we'll just move everything up just a little bit it's not always the easiest to tell when they are overlapped so sometimes you just have to mess with it so on this one i think we are overlapped now I'm trying not to grab the score line i don't think i got it all right so then we'll just weld again perfect now this one we do need to add some more score lines to it so you can go ahead and just make sure you have all of your score lines and you can just duplicate it and we need to add um, a score line right to the bottom here. So we need to make sure that this one goes right here along this edge and that's so that the square can fold up. I wouldn't worry too much about making it any shorter. It doesn't really matter, but you can you can shorten it if you'd like to. Um, the a paper behind this isn't gonna be used or under this, so it's not a big deal, but I'll make it shorter for you guys. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and you'll need one on each of the tabs. It just makes the tabs easier to fold. So you'll want one on each of the tabs. So we'll duplicate again and this one we're going to turn this way. You just want to make sure it's straight, which is not always super easy. And you're going to just put one on this tab. Oops. You just put one on this tab and then go ahead and duplicate one more time and put one on this tab. The one thing I wish Cricut would do is make these score lines just a little easier to see when you're working with them because you can't really see them unless you turn it um, white, which then we should be able to see them. So if you ever want to check your score lines, just turn your project white and I'm going to click um, send to, or move to send to back. And what that does is it just puts it behind everything else. So you'll see there's our score line, but you see how hard it is. You really still can't see them like at all. It's crazy to me. I hate it. It makes me nuts. But what we're going to do now is you want to select all and you want to click attach. And what that does is it's going to hold your score lines in with your, um, your project. So now you can see all your score lines a little bit better. And what we're going to do is now we need to just check our sizing. So it's definitely too big. It's too, see how it's too wide. 
So what we're going to do is size it down. And I know that I can go up to 11 and a half. So we'll just make it as big as we can. So we'll just do an 11 and a half tall or wide. And then it's going to be uh, about, like I said, five inches tall. So it should be fine. But it might be a little bit shorter than that. You'll just need to make sure that you know what size paper that you're using when you make these. So we're going to click make it. I'm going to get my machine turned on for you guys. And you'll see. And you could potentially... Um, if you made these just a little bit smaller, you could potentially fit um, two of them. But let's see. Let's see if we could try it. I don't think it'll fit, but let's see. So if you ever want to try to fit something, you just click on this. You can move to another mat. You want to move it to mat number one. Now, it's going to put it right on top of the other one. I think it's going to be too tall. But if it were just a little shorter, you could flip it. Oops. You could flip it this way, and you might potentially be able to fit both of them on one mat. Now, obviously this one won't fit and that's why it won't allow me to flip it. But if it would fit, you could easily flip it. So we'll just get rid of that guy. We don't need him. So we'll just get back up here and just change it back to one. So let me get the mat loaded and we can start cutting. So for this project with the maker, I'm gonna scoot you guys just a little bit. You're gonna need to use the scoring wheel, which I highly recommend. I really like the scoring wheel. Um, if you're using the Explorer, you can use the scoring stylus. For the maker, you put the scoring wheel into clamp B. Make sure that you have the plastic out and the gold sprocket or gear um, set to the in part so that you can um, easily get that around. For the Explorer, you'll put it in clamp A so you won't need to change out your blade. So we're going to load our mat and let me just, I'm using some ivory paper. It's just a, like a 65-ish pound. It's not super heavy cardstock. So we'll just load that in. And the first thing it's going to do is suck this bad boy all the way through the machine. And it's going to check its blade. Checks, what it does is it's currently checking the tool. It's going to set it so that the scoring wheel is in the right direction. And then it's going to go through and score all of our score lines first. I don't know how well you guys can see it. You probably can't see it real well, but you will when you go to do this. You'll see the lines on your paper as it scores them. It does not cut through your paper. It's just scoring your paper. And then this one, it's doing the little edge lines. And that's for the little base piece. This part takes just a few seconds. Now this is probably going to take quite a bit um, to cut. So I'll show you guys it's starting. But now we do need to change out our blade. So go ahead and open clamp B. Take out your scoring wheel and you're just going to put your regular blade, the one that came with your machine, right back in there. I'm going to go ahead and click on the go button. And we'll let this cut. I'll let you guys see it starting cutting, but this is kind of detailed with quite a few cuts, especially with those little triangles. So I'm just going to let it cut by itself. It's going to cut out our little base piece first, and then it should come along and it's going to cut out the outside lines. Make sure you do have a decently sticky mat when you do this. Um, if you don't, it could potentially... Um, not cut correctly, lift up a bit. Um, mine is not super sticky, but I think it'll be okay. So it's got the whole outside cut out, but you can see it's lifting a little here, so we'll just hope it holds. Um, but I'm gonna let this cut out, and when we come back, I'll show you guys how to assemble it. Pulled it off the mat and um, got all the little extra pieces, and I do see I missed one. But what I used is I used the quilling tool, and I just used the needle point part, and I just kind of went through and poked out any little pieces that it didn't come off on the mat. So this just made it a little easier to pull some of those pieces off. But we're gonna flip it this way because this is the way I have my score lines. And all we're gonna do is fold along the score lines. So you'll see you have a score line here where you have the little tab. And so I just carefully fold along that. And I just press real gently just to get it the fold started. And then once you've kind of gotten it started, I just go through all the way down just to get it started and then I'll fold the entire piece down. But that's our tab that will get the lantern started. And then we have the tab for the bottom and then we have all of our side pieces. So go ahead and fold along all of your lines. I just used, like I said, an ivory piece of paper, but you guys could do these so that they matched your wedding colors. You could do them in um, 
pretty much any color you want. You could do glitter cardstock if you wanted. Um, I mean, really, there that possibilities for colors on these are absolutely endless. So you're just going to go through and fold all of your tabs down. And you can fold these ones in, these little tiny ones. And then the little tiny ones are not always the easiest to get, so just take your time on them because they're pretty small. So sometimes they don't like to fold along your score line. Um, but they will. It just takes a little bit of work. And thankfully, this is just the bottom, so you can see I'm kind of crushing it. I'm not doing a very good job right now. Because this little, there we go. Um, but it's the bottom, so nobody will see it. So it's fine if it's not perfect. I'm just going to come back to that when it's being mean. So all I do is I take my little tiny tab here, and I just run a bead of hot glue along the edge very, very carefully. And I just use just the smallest amount. It does not take much. I'll usually just put like a dab down and then I'll just use the edge of the glue gun. I'm not really even triggering at all like with this. I'm not actually adding extra glue. Um, and then you just take that and you line it up with this piece. And you want to make sure that your base and your top are even and then you just push them together so that they're holding on to each other now you can see like I said we didn't really necessarily need the bottom it's totally fine without it um, it stands up on its own it's no big deal the bottom just gives it a more um, finished look now my bottom is a little bit small um, but again it didn't really matter with this one so I'm just gonna when you go to do your bottom I'll just toss it on there to show you guys again same idea take a little hot milk glue on your tab, again, you don't need a lot, just a little, and you glue your bottom in. I, again, I would have should have made my bottom just a little bit bigger, but sometimes it's trial and error on these, and that one was definitely not big enough. So once you have your stuff all glued together, you have your finished paper lantern. Let me turn off this light so you guys can maybe see it a little bit better. Nope, that's worse. Let me turn that back on for you. So this is your finished paper lantern. These make such beautiful centerpieces. And what I like to do is I will take, let me see which one looks better in here. So we have a taller candle. We'll turn this off real quick. So we have a nice tall candle. I don't know how well you guys can see this because it's kind of bright in here today. But um, when it's dark in your, in your wedding, oh my gosh, these are so darn pretty. And then you can take, uh, maybe this one might work a little. That one looks a little bit better. It's a little brighter. So there we go. So here is our paper lantern. These are honestly so easy to make, really, really pretty, and they just add that little touch of extra something special for your wedding. Let me turn that light back on so you guys can see this again. Um, these, again, you can do them in any color scheme that you want, glitter, whatever, floats your boat, and you can add whatever you would like to in your cutouts. These are just a really fun way to add a little something extra special to your centerpieces or throughout your wedding just to add a little extra light. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. Hit that bell icon. That'll let you know when I post a new video. I hope you guys enjoyed Wedding Wednesday and happy crafting.